Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're trying the next recipe in the official Downton Abbey cookbook, and it's English muffins. And I'm pretty excited about these because I've never made them before. And I did learn that the nursery rhyme, The Muffin Man, is actually about English muffins, not about these sweet muffins that we eat over here in America. So, I'm really excited. Um, one, the recipe does say I can use a hook with my mixer to knead my dough, and I'm going to do that. I know Mrs. Pattermore wouldn't have done that in Downton Abbey, but I have to work smarter and not harder. So I am going to take the suggestion that the book says and do that. I have already um, heated up my milk and melted my butter, trying to give myself a few shortcuts to get started. And without further ado, let's make some English muffins. Okay, we're gonna start with three and three fourths cups of flour. Okay. Okay, and there's a cup of warm milk along with a tablespoon of butter. Pour that right in there. Here's one egg, slightly whisked. Two teaspoons of active dry yeast. It says to mix with a spoon until a shaggy dough forms. I'm honestly not sure what shaggy dough means, but I just think they mean that everything needs to be blended together. Maybe a little loosely at the moment. The warm milk is going to act with the yeast. And we also need two teaspoons of salt. Mix that in just a little bit. Okay. So this is where you could either turn it out onto a floured surface and knead for 15 to 20 minutes, or you can use a bread hook on your mixer for 10 minutes. We're going to turn on low and let it do its job for about 10 minutes. It needs to be smooth and elastic. So I'm going to turn it on and come back in 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been going with a hook for about 10 minutes. Um, it needs to rise for two hours, but first I'm going to just double check that it is smooth and elastic. That's looking pretty good. Nice and stretchy. Nice and smooth. All right. All right, we're going to lightly butter up this bowl. Okay, so I buttered my bowl for rising. I'm gonna just put it right in there. And we're gonna cover it. And we're actually gonna let it proof for two hours. So I'll be back. Okay, it's been rising for about two hours. Now we have to divide the dough in roughly about 14 two ounce separate balls of dough. I'm just gonna divide each side. It's nice and stretchy. I'm on a nice flowered work surface. I 
I need to be rolling them a little bit better. Okay, now we just gotta flatten them a little bit. To be about a quarter of an inch thick. All right, we're gonna cover them and let them rise for another 30 minutes. Okay, so now I have my large frying pan, lightly greased, you could do this, or a cast iron skillet and it's on medium heat and I need to put the muffins in here without crowding them so if I have to do more than one batch I will I got eight of them going and it says to cook them until the bottoms are dry and then turn them with a spatula and then I just keep then I reduce the heat and then keep flipping them back and forth until they're nicely puffed, lightly brown on both sides and cooked through. And it's gonna take about 20 minutes. Okay, the bottoms are pretty dry. It reminds me a little bit like pancakes as far as the cooking method but what you're looking for is totally different they're not going to be great circles Okay, I'm going to reduce the heat and flip it again. It's a nice brown color. Okay, that one says 196. We're going to say that's close enough. Okay, here we go. There's my first eight. I'm going to pull one apart and see how we did. Okay, I chose this nice round one. There are some funny shaped ones, but I'm going to go with the one I think is most perfect. It says to split it with a fork. So that's what I'm doing. It's kind of small. It's a lot smaller than the ones that you would get in the grocery store. But as long as the inside is how it's supposed to look, then I will be happy. I do have the last six cooking in the pan. Well, it's not as nook and cranny as the ones in the store. Not sure. It is done all the way through. So there's that. It's plain. Oh, it turned out good. It's got that texture of an English muffin. Despite the fact that it doesn't have the nooks and crannies that you would expect in an English muffin. But it's otherwise really good, and I'm happy to have these. And now I know how to make English muffins, and they're pretty easy, actually. So I'll probably be making them more often for my family. So 
I appreciate y'all stopping by today. I hope you subscribe because I have more fun things to share with you. And give me a thumbs up if you're having a great day. Bye.